Hey, what's going on YouTube? Daniel Dallas here. Trigonometry basics. All right. So this topic is pretty hard for lots of students. They experience lots of difficulties in understanding this topic. And the main problem in this concept is connected with the function. So many students think that sine of x or sine of alpha is simply multiplication, some, you know, sine expression into and multiplying by x or by alpha. So actually that's misleading. You want to see more? Okay, so just be focused on this video. And this is very, very significant video, you guys. If you're like watching this, it means you at the starting point and that's what you need if you're really newcomer to trigonometry and you want to explore it in depth. All right, so we start from the basics and here I'll show you the main trigonometric equations that involves sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, and also inverse function like sine minus one or cosine minus one that you mostly use on your calculator. Okay, so let's get started. So here we have right angle triangle. This is triangle ABC. So right angle means one angle is 90 degrees. So angle C in this case is simply 90 degrees. So we put that, okay. But sometimes this like small square means that this is the right angle. So BC is perpendicular to AC. Okay, so I put some letters that indicate the sides. So Q and P, it doesn't matter which letters you put. You can put like C, normally like P instead of, and you can put C instead of P, you can put A and let's say it's here B. If you like, that, okay, no problem, we can work with that letters if you stick to it. But expect that on exams and different problems, you might have different letters. So that's why letters don't mean, so it, it don't mean anything, okay? Just stick to their main sense, how the letters connected with each other, okay? With each other. So in this case, we have angle X. This is the angle A. Mostly, in most cases, it measured in degrees. And for GCC program, is the main measure is in degrees. However, there is alternative units. It's radians. And here is correspondence that 180 in degrees correspond to pi in radians. So, you know, the number pi, which value? is about 3.14 and something so but you can use calculator and press the pi button it will give you precise value for like more precise definitely value for pi actually the pr really precise value can be calculated up to i don't know there is no limits right now during the technology so high tax actually time you can calculate pi no matter like which digit you want to see okay there are lots of algorithms that can do that okay so let's get back to the point so we have the triangle it's right angle at angle c and now let's see some specific terms okay first of all we have for right angle triangle with the angle x that we mark here so we have the following first of all we have hypotenuse. So hypotenuse is the longest side, okay? But sometimes it's not like necessarily. So sometimes you might be given triangle that made up not to scale, so it's drawn not to scale. In this case, the longest side. So it sounds a bit weird because it's not applicable anymore. So what's the right definition for height? Hypotenuse, yes, it's the longest side. However, if you're not able to measure it or at least understand that it's clear, the longest side, it's always supposed to 90 degrees. And that's the key definition for hypotenuse. So this is the longest side in the right angle triangle that's always opposed to 90 degrees angle, okay? So that's what hypotenuse. So I can mark as hype. All right, that shortened for hypotenuse. So next one, the opposite. So actually, one more time, no matter where your angle X is taken, so it might be angle A, it might be angle B, doesn't matter. 
Hypotenuse is always opposed to 90 degrees and hence it's not dependent, so its position is not dependent on their angle where you're taking. Okay, so next one. The sides, what is called legs, so B and A are legs of the triangle and in this case they have specific relation to the angle. So if you chosen the angle X here, this angle A, so one part of the angle, basically the side, that becomes the arm of your angle. So angle should have two arms, AB and AC. So the small A is actually the length of AC and AC is the arm of your angle. So because it's a part of the angle, we sometimes we used to call the name and we put adjacent side, so adjacent, okay? So next one, so A is adjacent side. In this case, B is opposed not to 90 degrees, it's impossible, so B will be opposed to your X angle, okay? For your chosen angle. So in this case, B is the opposite side because it opposed the angle. Okay, now it seems to me that everything clear but what if what if we choose the angle right here so let's say this is another angle you can always figure out the value for given let's say this angle you can always figure out this angle but let's say this is y y in degrees so what it means what it means it means that right now right now hypotenuse stays the same why what about b and a relating to the angle y Let's pretend we don't have any X angle. So now we have only Y. So B is not anymore a po opposite side. Now it becomes adjacent, right? Because now B becomes the part of the angle. So one more time, we need to relate it to angle Y. We consider this side as adjacent now, okay? Now, what about A? Now it opposed to the angle. So if I erase, arrow here so a becomes the opposite side to the angle y okay so that how it works you you know names for the legs actually depends on where you choose the alpha or angle so in this case angle is y so it depends on where you choose the angle okay but we normally go back and let's leave our angle to be x but not y right we just go back we erase y and now we're just left with normal positions so b is the opposite side a is adjacent and actually no matter how you call the sides it might be like n m and p it might be a b c but normally you know that's the you know that's sort of like tendency the mark to mark hypotenuse as c so adjacent probably a and B for opposite. Okay, let's stick to this part in, and now let's define the rules where actually trigonometric functions used the first time. All right, let's do that. So I erase those one. And actually, first of all, before we consider, I just tell a few words what actually trigonometric equations do for you. So what sort of like relations they show they actually so trigonometry 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 is designed to show relations elements in the right angle triangle okay so relation what sort of relations okay you see there are three sides you know that's specific theorem what is called Pythagoras right also make sure you watch this video about Pythagoras there are actually lots of plenty 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 a lot of stuff that you can use in order to uh, get practice with Pythagoras however I just write the result and outcome of this theorem so the longest side what is called hypotenuse basically it's hype we square it, square it up and we connect with two other sides, so with two legs, okay? In this case, it doesn't matter like whether B is opposite or adjacent. It doesn't matter here because 
Pythagoras theorem connects three elements, and all three elements are sides. Okay? What about trigonometry? Trigonometry does a bit different things. It connects always, look, it connects always one side, let's say A, with another side, let's say B, and with the angle. So the key role here is for the angle. So here you can barely find the angle. No angle is at all. Okay? Yes, you can express C and A and B through specific trigonometric equations, and only then you find out specific trigonometric identity, which is 1 equals sine, let's say, x squared plus cosine of the angle x squared. But this is a result of applying trigonometry to Pythagoras. Okay, so hold on here and we just come back and to purpose of trigonometry. So trigonometry, as I told you, connects two elements, two sides with the angle. Okay, so it always connects two sides with the angle. It might connect C with A and with the angle X. It might connect C and B with the angle. Okay, now it's a reasonable question. In which way, in which way you can find out the, those connections, those relations? Okay, so that's about trigonometric relations or equations. Okay, so I just raised those connections and now just I clearly stated how they exactly connected. Okay, so I'll give all the formula in terms of hype, opposite and adjacent side relating to the angle X, and also I convert it into letters like C, B, and A. So guys, many people, many students actually have some troubles with memorizing the formula. So I'll give you a shortcut how to memorize them properly so that you have like some reference formula and other formula you can easily write from scratch, okay? So look, first of all, I want to connect. What's the best for you guys? Sine or cosine? You heard this word many times, so what do you like? So for example, I like sine. And that's why I need to memorize only one relations. So I just simply saying, okay, the opposite side is actually hypotenuse multiplied by sine of their angle x. Okay? Sine of the angle x. That word I need to memorize. So definitely you need to memorize only one equation only one trigonometric equation. So for example, let's say you memorize this one, okay? So how to derive the next one for connection adjacent with hype? So you just write in the following things. So here is opposite, you swap into adjacent, okay? This is sort of analogy. Hype you don't change, you see the structure. So what do you think, guys, what goes next? Of course, the same structure, except for you swap your sine of x into another function, what is called cosine, cosine x, okay? So one more time, two swapping things, opposite to adjacent, and sine just to the opposite function cosine. It's not actually opposite, they are not opposite to each other. And by the way, there is no definition what opposite. There is inverse function. But the cosine is not inverse for sine. It means just for your set, you just need you just remember that always with sine there is cosine, right? This is the rule. Yes, I know you tell me that there is the tangent. Hold on, we'll just get this soon. Alright, what are we gonna do next? Okay. For tangent, that's the time, what we can do, we can take the first equation and just simply divide by the second. Here you need to just remember, if you start with sine, and I recommend to start with sine, then goes cosine, logically, 
and then goes equation for a tangent. Okay, so what we have for a tangent? So if we divide the first equation by the second one, on the left side we'll get opposite to adjacent. Okay, that's opposite to adjacent. So on the right side, what we have? We have a fraction, long fraction, where is the top one, numerator, is hype times sine of the angle x. So the bottom part is the same, hype times the cosine now, cosine of x. And look what happened. Because sine and cosine, they're the same. Sorry, my bad. Hype and hype, they're the same. You just simply cancel them, all right? You probably know hype, okay, let's take seven, seven centimeters, so seven and seven in both numerator and denominator. So you can just simply cancel. And look what you stay with. You stay with opposite to adjacent. You didn't memorize that, right? You even didn't memorize this one. You only memorize the first one, the very first one. That's your like goal to learn by heart. And next, all the following equations, one, two, and three, actually the result of some operation, that's it. Okay, so opposite to adjacent, what do you see here? It's sine over cosine, sine over cosine. And this, by definition, is tangent alpha. So in this case, not alpha, but x. So we used angle x, okay? So that's it. So you see that we also connect opposite adjacent side with the tangent, okay? That's how it works. So one more time, how to use them practically. If you are given, let's say, opposite side, and you are given, let's say, adjacent, and you need to find the angle, okay? That's the question. So for example, opposite adjacent you are given. So you need to find angle. Look, you have three actual equations, so one, two, and three. So what are you doing? What do you need to do? You're given opposite and adjacent, so you're looking for equation, the original equation. Like, don't create from scratch anything like derivative except for that. So you're looking for equation where opposite and adjacent side are connected. You know that it's always connect two sides and one angle, right? That trigonometry was about, and it's still about now. So that's equation three. Opposite to adjacent tells you this is the tangent. So tan of L of x, angle x. So from here, you can figure out at least tangent x. The next question, how to find angle x. So you, you, you will use inverse functions. I'll tell you a bit later, okay? That's the strategy. If you're given, let's say, hype, and you give an angle x. So you need to find, let's say, opposite. Okay, so first of all, you're given hype. That's why you're chosen between one and two. Hype is here, hype is here. Because in three, there is no hype. So in order to find opposite side, if you're given hype and the angle, okay, so you're looking for equation where the opposite side is. So it's only one, because opposite side equals hype times sine x. Okay, be careful, opposite relating to the angle, okay, every time. So you, you, you will use one. Right now, you use as it's written here. And this is the way, okay, this is the way how you can use the formula. I'll show you a bit later how to apply this formula and just here, I'll just mark some several sides and I'll show you how it works, okay. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you that sine of x and cosine of x, as well as tangent of x, is simply specific functions where which intakes argument angle, okay? So that's a root, so that this sort of, you know, like typical mistake. Many students, when they see like sort of equations connected with trigonometry, they think, in, okay, sine x or just simply sine x without degrees 
So they think in it, this is like sine multiplying by x. No, guys, hold on. This is not correct. So it's not correct. Sine is sort of function y from x, which in takes argument. Okay, it's sort of a black box. You put you your input is x, let's say in degrees. So you press in sign button on the calculator, it gives you the output. So output is always a number. Look guys, it's always a number. And this what many students confuse about. So you your input is degrees, right? Let's say 30 degrees, okay? Then you go to calculator and press sign button, specific like sign button on your calculator. So what's going next? This is black box for you, right? So you don't know how it works, at least at this stage. So you will know that at A level, or probably a later your first on your first education. So how it works? So it works pretty simple. So the black box intake your argument x, in this case it's 30 degrees, it just generates specific like algorithm uh, and it gives you the value. So it basically use predetermined value, okay? There are lots of like predetermined stuff inside the machine. All right, so the output here, that's the input. The output here is a number. If you practice with that, so sine 30 will give you one over two, or just 0.5, that's the same. So you see, this is the number, okay? How it works the way back? For example, you're given that you have the sign of some unknown angle. Let's say you calculate it through the first equation. So sign from here as the whole factor is simply opposite divided by hype, okay? So I write that. So it's opposite over hype. So let's say opposite is 7 and hype is 10. Okay, so how it works? How it works? Or maybe let, let me give you like standard values. Let's say opposite is square root of 3 and hypotenuse is 2. So square root of 3 is about 1.7. So yeah, that might be the case when you have the third instead of like normal number. Okay, so square root of three over two, that stays for sine x. How to find an angle? So how? You do what? You go to the calculator, press specific button, which is called inverse function. So on your calculator, it will look like sine minus one. That means you remember from the theory of functions of f minus 1, that's inverse. It's like sort of inverse fun function that is so graphically it's reflected along the mirror, which is set up on the bisector of the 90 degrees, right? So sim simply to say it's set up on the line y equals x. Then you reflect your function. But you don't need to think about this. Look. So what actually happens on the calculator machine? So you have the input, now in this case, number. Your, your input now, your input is the number, square root of three over two. It's not degrees, it's a number, okay? Your input and number. Then you press in sign minus one and calculator tells you, okay guys, the output, the output is radians or degrees. If you switch to degrees mode, so you need to make sure there is the symbol on, on the screen, on the screen of the calculator, or probably you need to press degree button. So I don't know how it works. So all calculators works in different ways. So for example, if your calculator is Android based, it works a bit different, like different interface of those who are on apples, which are on apples. So that's why, so you need to make sure that the grease indicator uh, highlighted on the screen, on the digital screen, 
of your smartphone or on your real calculator machine, so on your GDC. So the output will give you degrees and according to a specific value, that standard value, I just remember without any calculating, the result will be 60 degrees. Now your output in degrees, okay? So make sure you understand this. This is the very basics that you need to understand. So your input in the first case, when you want to calculate um, the sign result, so you need to calculate not the angle itself, but the sign. Your you know the angle is 30 degrees, you just input into sign, it will give you 0.5 as the output, a number. This is vice versa. So you've calculated sine x through opposite to height, for example, you got value, which is square root of 3 over 2, and you have the result for sine, okay? So, sorry, uh, the result, yeah, sine, for x, sine of x, you'll have result as number. Now, you use calculator in order to get the angle. Your, your goal is to get the angle. So you input number, square root 3 over 2. You put it in the machine, press sine minus 1, your command, and 60 degrees as output. In this case, the output is degrees. Okay? So that how it works. That how it works. Okay, so I'll give you some basics, I promise you, about how to apply this in to, in order to calculate some things for like practical. Uh, you have some sides and you need to figure out, let's say, angle. Okay, let's do it. So let's say that opposite side is one. Let's say your hypotenuse is two because this longest side hypotenuse always should be more then opposite side and also it should be more than adjacent. So that's right. And you need to figure out x. So find x. Find x. So what are you going to use? Okay, one more time. So you need to use the relations, the equations where you have opposite and hype. You will always have the angle, don't worry. So every single equation have the angle. Remember, it's connection between two sides and the angle. Okay, so in this case, you have hypotenuse and opposite side. So this is the equation one. Opposite connected with hype. Okay, so what are you doing? You just plug it first. Don't try to calc to express sign immediately. First, just put the numbers. It's easier. So you use one and just you put two equals one times sine x. Oops, the way back. Sorry, my bad. You have hype here and opposite is one here. Okay, so one more time. Opposite is here, one equals to two times sine x. All right, so next, your goal is to find sine x. Sine x from here, sine x from here is one over two. So you're writing sine x is one over two. Okay, what are you going to do next? You go to the calculator because right now you cannot do that in your like mentally. You don't know the standard angles. So that's why sine x equals 1, 2. You just go to calculator. So which one? You have 1 over 2, but you want degrees. So this doesn't work. You go to sine minus 1. So your input is what you have in your value or sine, 1 over 2, that's your input. You put 1 over 2 here, press sine minus 1, and all allowed. So result sine for inverse sine is 30 degrees. So this is the same as here, but the way back. Okay? So your output should be in degrees, and that's your result. So you go back and write, okay, so x from here, thanks for my calculator, is 30 degrees, okay? So that's how you can find that. So guys, in the next session we'll be practicing a bit more and actually also make sure you go through revision after completing the course for trigonometry. 
So I encourage you. And also try to do revision, you know, uh, step by step. So first just go through the first video that's dedicated to basics, then go to high level if you want to see more complicated tasks. So hope you like that, hope you understand what trigonometry is designed for, how to connect basically two sides is the and the angle. So and how the calculator works. Okay? Don't mess up. That's very significant for you. Hope you like that. Don't forget to subscribe, share this video to anyone who's interested in math. And thanks for a new subscriber coming up. Be in touch.